Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Mike and Dave Hit the Stage. This is Dave. And I'm Mike. Wow, that was formal. <laughs> I told you. <laughs> Which is kind of funny because this is going to be a pretty relaxed episode. Yeah, this uh, is going to be a fun one. We're not, uh, there's no playlist for this one. You're going to have to search out these bands on your own. They have, some of these bands have 20 albums. <laughs> I'm not kidding. Yeah, but they're also bands that everybody's probably going to know. Yeah. And if you haven't heard more than just the hits, go deep diving. And yeah. Uh, every replacement on this list has something unique about them. Right. And as we've as we've gone through this, uh, I, basically, I, I boycott every replacement singer. Not everyone, but most of them. Yeah, we're going to talk about that because <laughs> I have arguments. Uh, this is the replacements. We're going to talk about singers who replaced other singers in bands. Uh, some to great success, some not so much. Right. Some, some, you know, listen, some of these you're going to be like, what? I didn't even know they were a replacement singer. Yeah. Well, the first one on the list is probably one of my favorite singers. Uh, Brian Johnson replacing Bon Scott and ACDC. Right, right. And I didn't even know that until later on because I found ACDC when I was a kid. Remember I told you uh, what, in, in, the, in the first uh, episode of this podcast, I think one of my favorite memories is uh, Fly on the Wall. Fly on the Wall, which is a Bon Scott masterpiece. Right. So, you know, so, I mean, I was I was introduced to ACDC, you know, I didn't even realize there were two different singers. Yeah. Well, if you really listen, you right. hear it. Right. But I was like seven years old. Yeah. <laughs> a seven-year-old's not going to notice. Maybe, maybe even younger. Yeah. And what, 75 they started? I think so, yeah. Something, 74, 75 ACDC started. By the time... Uh, uh, Bon Scott passed away was 80... 81? Was it 81? I thought it was like 85, 86. Was it that... Uh, I it don't... might have been 81. It was... One was Back in Black. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Holy crap. Yeah, we're... But Back in Black was... <laughs> the, the one that brought him back. That first that yeah. first scream you knew right away, this was going to be all right. This is it, yeah. It's a, everything's going to be okay. Yeah. Because Brian Johnson's voice is gargling with gravel for the last 20 years. Yeah. The same guy walks up drinking drinking a scotch, smoking a cigarette, puts it out in one in the other, and then hops on stage and starts screaming. But think about how big they were, even with their last tour. Not by the way, the Axl Rose tour, which I did which, want to bring up. Yes, man, we were both holding that. I was holding that. <laughs> I was holding that card right up my sleeve. I was it's, like, wait a minute, there's another replacement singer, but uh, not that one. But I remember when they went out. It had to be 2000. 15? Whatever it was, they went out. And I remember every one of my friends went. And I was like one of the only ones who didn't go. And I was like, wow. What did I miss? Yeah. I've never got to see them live. No. And I feel like this is one of those bands that should be seen live. Because, that well, when both of the young brothers were alive, mm-hmm. they were they were always locked into each other. Right. But now that it's just Angus, it's still, he's a, you know, at... 70 something years old. Right. He's a phenomenal right. guitarist. They're, they're a phenomenal band. Well, they're, they're, they're listen, that they're playing they're playing to the to the crowd who is going to love everything they do because it's it's a party. It's yeah. basically a party. They are a part they are I think they are really the first party band. Right. You and know? we're going to talk about other party bands in this in this list. Right. But they really were like the first Keg party, drinking beer, uh, uh, right? Would play at, uh, at, a, at, a, at a at a bar that wasn't even a rock bar. It would be they would put that remix of uh, "You Shook Me All Night Long" on, yep. which would have that that what you call it that drum beat behind it. But it was it was, it was ACDC. Yeah. One of the things I love is that when you look at ACDC, there the, you said in a previous episode that um, men at work got you into the idea of Australia. Australia. For me. <laughs> It was ACDC. This was your fantasy Australia band? Because I, I learned in school that Australia was a prison colony initially. <laughs> and all I thought was Mad Max and this. And ACDC. And yeah. ACDC, which goes together. It could work, absolutely. Like bread and butter. Yeah. I mean, they, they were phenomenal. That's the, funny. The, the, the energy that they produce at right. any age. Right. Like, I remember hearing them on the Howard Stern Private Parts soundtrack. Mm-hmm. And even then, it was... You know they weren't young, and they no. were still just wailing. Yeah, and and if I'm if I'm correct, did I read recently that they're going to do another album? They're not going to tour. Yeah, they're not going to tour, but they're going to they're going to do another album, yeah. right? 
And they, don't, they don't even have to. No, they want to. They, they don't have to. The uh, Judas Priest was talking about the same thing. They were mm-hmm. talking about the idea of recording and maybe touring less. Right. Um, with Because both of their guitarists, one is out of the band, which I think is... They're not saying it's going to change, but since the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame induction, that's starting to look like it might change. Right. And uh, their other guitarist is suffering from Parkinson's disease. Yeah. He was at, he was at and performed, but he can't do that on a regular basis. Mm-hmm. But it, it's nice that they're all working together. You know, um, ACDC is one of those bands where very few people changed. Yeah. You know, um, we were talking about Clutch on the way here and how Clutch is all the same members all the, original all the way members. through. Yeah. And that's, that's so rare. Yeah. You know, even look at this list. Like when we go through this list, you're going to see how many just singers have been changed. Right. And some, some of them, I didn't even know there were that many singer changes. Well, that, that's going to be the next one. The next yeah. one is, is the huge one. But even even with Axel temporarily, temporarily replacing Brian Johnson was interesting. I'm not an Axel Rose fan because of all of the prima donna diva stuff. Right, but it's a cool little uh, a, a little trivia fact, you yeah. know, that not a lot of people remember until but, I thought of it, and I was like, wait a minute. But I did notice something. What's that? He went on tour with ACDC for over a year. Right, and there was not one late start. Yeah. There was not one issue of him walking off the stage mm-hmm. because he was at either as big a fan as everyone else or bigger. Right. And I think he knew if he played that game, they would have kicked his ass out. Well, did, did in, in the recent Guns N' Roses stuff, did he walk out? No, they had a lot of late starts. Did they? Did yeah. they? I have no idea. But it, they never said it was a him or a, a, an attitude problem. Yeah. But he was known for that. Yeah, you know, I, he, well, I remember back in the day. He caused yeah. a riot, right? Because in Metallica, Montreal, right? Yeah, because yeah. Me, uh, Metallica singer James Hetfield caught Pyro to the face and got burned severely, and he couldn't and cover. He, he didn't, didn't want to. Yeah, he didn't feel like he had to, so he did not even a full song. Yeah, slammed down the microphone and walked off, and legit yeah, sure. riots. Right. Meanwhile, Metallica is worried that their singer is going to either die or have a, a <laughs> yeah, facial well, they, disfigurement. Right. There's no no camaraderie, hmm. and that that always affected the way I looked at at um, Guns N' Roses. Yeah, and Guns N' Roses is one of those bands where they had very few replacements mm-hmm. until the band broke up and Axel decided to do his own Guns, Guns N' Roses. Roses. As I we joke around, when you start your own thing over again, I'm going to start my own with Blackjack and Hookers. Yeah, um, <laughs> famously um, amongst my friends, we talk about how Dream Theater, uh, the drummer, left. Right, and we joke that he said, Portnoy said, I'm going to start my own dream theater with blackjack and hookers. Right. And started sons of Apollo. Yeah. With former keyboardist from dream theater. Right. Derek Sherinian. And isn't that basically what uh, velvet revolver was too? Yeah. It It was was basically uh, guns and roses without, uh, well, it was guns and roses and stone temple pilots. It was guns and roses without Axel and stone temple pilots without the rest of the band. Yeah. (laughs) Um, I actually really, really love velvet revolver. Yeah. And I'm not a huge Slash fan. Yeah. I think Slash ruined uh, the last Ozzy album. The last Ozzy album he played on. Did he see? I, see, I, 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 I lost track with Ozzy. Yeah, I know you did. Yeah. And Ozzy is actually part of our next discussion. Uh, but that, that last Ozzy album, it had very much Slash's writing on it. And yeah. I don't like Slash's writing. Like, I, don't, I just don't enjoy it. Really? Um, I love okay. Duff. Yeah. I, don't like, I don't like how he writes. I like how he plays. Mm-hmm. And... Um, yeah, no, Matt Sorum. Matt Sorum's in actually another playlist that we have working on. And uh, that one I'm very happy about. But I don't I don't hear from him enough. Mm-hmm. But to go to the next list, Black Sabbath. And this is a huge list. Because founded by um, Tony Iommi, uh, Bill Ward, Geezer Butler, and Ozzy Osbourne. Later, Ozzy was kicked out and replaced with Ronnie James Dio. Awesome. I love Ronnie James Dio. Ronnie started doo-wop with Ronnie and the Red Caps all the way up through Elf in the in this in the seventies. You get to the late seventies, you have Heaven and Hell. I never saw Elf. I never heard Elf. Oh, Elf is a Is it heavy? A, no. It's, is it, it's it's a transition? Is it a It's folky. Really? It's it's heavy but folky. I'm it's, gonna check that out. I, I I think if you if you love Dio, you need to hear it. Yeah. But then 
he did he did uh, Black Sabbath for a few years. They were talking about doing headlining shows with Ozzy, mm-hmm. where Ozzy be the headliner, they'd be backing up. Like, they'd be opening, basically, right. and Dio's like, I'm not doing it, and just up and quit. Really? Why would why would he not want to do, just because it was Ozzy? Well, he did not, he referred to Ozzy as a clown. Okay. Because I, Ozzy wasn't a trained singer, he mm-hmm. didn't try, he was always messed up. Right. This goat went against most of what Dio did. Okay. So he did not have respect for Ozzy. Mm-hmm. Um, in that, he up and quit, which, from experience, is, I've done it. It's the most unprofessional thing you can do. Okay. And me, I'm in. I was in a band. I was right. in, not even a big band. I was in a band. Yeah. These I guys never, were on, I quit on a, a huge tour. I was always quietly asked to leave. Yeah. And then I've been kicked out, and I've I've quit. And um, then and then. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna toot my own horn right now. Go ahead, toot, I've, toot. Nev- I've never been replaced. <laughs> I've been replaced. I'm gonna say this. <laughs> I'm gonna say this. I've been replaced. They've tried to replace me. I've I I was replaced <laughs> in shadow. Sorry. By my friend Schnoz. Yeah. I remember. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, awesome guy. Awesome bassist. He's a great guy. He's a great bassist. And then Schnoz moved to vocals and they got Brian Crean. And I know <laughs> if anything ever happens and they want to do more, I am not even on the list anymore. <laughs> he is so good. <laughs> like there is no, there's no way I can hold a candle to the way Brian, uh, Brian, Brian yeah. Green plays. Yeah. He's, he he's, is phenomenal. Yeah. I used to. I've known him since '94, and, and and I've I think I've met him like two or three times. Yeah, and I'm judge, judging from sudden fear and all the all mm-hmm. the all the other stuff. Light years ahead of me. <laughs> I don't even I don't even care. Like if he said, "Uh, you want to tune my basses for me?" All right, <laughs> something. <laughs> Feeble finger <laughs> reaching. He's awesome. Yes. And okay, so Dio replaces Ozzy. Right. Dio quits. I'm, look, I'm looking down this list. Go ahead. You're going to love this. Because now Halford comes in and does live shows. Because they were on tour with Judas Priest. What What was his name? Uh, late, late 80s, early right, 90s. Right, right. Okay. I think it was 91. Okay. So he does a couple of shows and fills in. Is there is there video of that? Yes. I got to find that. Not only is it, it's not only that he filled in, he was doing double duty. He was so doing he Priest do, then. He'd do the entire Priest show, then he'd do the Black Sabbath stuff. Okay. And they were doing, he was doing Dio and Ozzy songs. Yeah. In his voice. I love That's I love Halford's voice. Yeah. So he ends up, they complete the tour. Um, they finally get, at some point they get Ian Gillen. Okay. From Deep Purple. Okay. For one album. I don't even know if it was toured. Okay. Personally, I never looked into it. I didn't like it. I was about to say, I was about to ask you how it was. I like I've never, never heard any of these. I'll tell you, I boycotted all the all the replacement singers. Well, I didn't even know about these. Go ahead. So Ian Gillen shreds his own voice trying to sing for Black Sabbath. Really? He burnt his voice. Why? Out. It's not that. No, but he hard. was screaming. Okay. It just wasn't. It wasn't his deal. Hate. He hated it. Iomi hated it. They ended up releasing it. It didn't do well. Tony Martin comes in. They do uh, the four, three, four albums with Tony Martin, including okay. a live album, which includes my favorite version of Black Sabbath, Black Sabbath mm-hmm. live. It's my favorite version of it is with Tony Martin. Uh-huh. And I should feel guilty about that because Tony Martin was part of the weird years of Black Sabbath. Yeah. But it's so good. It's, yeah. And his songs are really, they're 80s, like late 80s, early 90s, mm-hmm. that feel. And Now, the, who's writing... Tony. Tony's doing most of the right? writing. and Lyrically, too, as well? Or? I think so. I feel like, Tony Martin also wrote lyrics, but yeah. you can feel, like, you can feel the guidance of Tony. I was about to say, because if, if, if Ozzy's not writing Black Sabbath songs and somebody else takes over, is it is really it Black, Black Sabbath? Sabbath? Well, here's the thing. He wasn't the only writer. Right. It was, yeah. It was also Geezer. Right. But there was a point where neither Ozzy or Geezer were in the band. There was actually... Uh, a point where the only member of Black Sabbath in Black Sabbath was Tony Iommi. Yeah. So Bill Ward had already jumped ship, and he was playing either not with anyone or with Ozzy. Yeah. And then there was a point where Geezer was in Ozzy's solo band in in you know in Ozzy, and then the next thing you know, um, they get another Deep Purple alumni, Glenn Hughes, mm-hmm. and they make one album called The Seventh Star. Okay. And it was. Pretty good. Mm-hmm. I wouldn't call it Black Sabbath. Yeah, it shouldn't be, but the label forced them to throw the Black Sabbath name on it just to just to sell. It was Tony Iommi's Black Sabbath. 
That's what it was called? It was called Tony Iommi's Black Sabbath. Yeah. And the album's name was Seventh Star. Okay. It's a great Glenn Hughes album. <laughs> it's a great Iommi Hughes album. Which right. I found out late years later that there were several Iommi Hughes albums. Really? Um, they have an album together called Fused. Mm-hmm. It's actually th- like a s- legit studio project. And it was phenomenal. Really? Okay. Heavy as hell. Mm-hmm. Also, they did a thing called the DEP Sessions. Their, the DEP Sessions were songs that they wrote. They were planning on doing another album. They ended up not not completing what they wanted to do. Yeah. But it ended up getting released as the DEP Sessions. Those are the best Tony Iommi, Glenn Hughes songs. Glenn Hughes has that soul voice. Yeah. And Deep Purple. <clears throat> There's a button for that. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I was looking at it and it's so far away. <laughs> Hey, what, no, which one closest. is it? It's the one closest oh, to you. Oh, damn it. All right. Yeah, so we have a cough button in case you need a <laughs> cough or sneeze. Or you open a soda or clear your throat. I just no, I just turned away. Like this. Yeah, yeah like I think that. my mic picked that up, yeah. though, and it was so but, loud. But still. So, by, by the way, I'm enjoying this I'm enjoying this history lesson because I'm just going, mm-hmm, uh-huh, yeah. <laughs> well, you don't, have, you don't have a horse in this race. No, I don't. Because you didn't listen to any of these guys. <laughs> so I love Glenn Hughes. Now... Black Sabbath, after that, stayed dormant for years. Mm-hmm. And then all of a sudden, they, because of OzFest and the interest there, they reunited for like a series of shows. Is that when it happened? Because I, it I, was an OzFest. I've seen, here's the funniest thing is Black Sabbath is probably one of the most seen uh, shows by me only because of OzFest. Ozfest. I would go. I would go see the thousands of bands beforehand. Who would you know? 20, 20 to you know, twenty five bands. I, I love all those bands. I watch all that, and then I would see Ozzy and Black Sabbath. Yep. I remember the first time I saw Black Sabbath was in Ozfest. Yeah, and it was at Stadium. No, that, that's on uh, the first PNC in Jersey. I was at with that one. Um, it was actually the was first time I saw day. Black Label. So they had the two stages. You yeah. had to walk from one to the other, and I'm with a guy who has one leg, and he is. Running past me and Luigi. Wow. Running. Yeah. Literally, he could run. Oh, yeah? Yeah, I'm fat. He, Of course he's pacing me. <laughs> he's lapping me. <laughs> With one leg. One leg, carrying a beer. Yeah. He didn't care. Not so, spilling it. Go ahead. I'm definitely sorry. not. So, we're going from stage to stage. So, we go see Soulfly on stage, on this stage. We go to the other one. And I think it was, that was, that was the year. Oh. That was the year I saw multiple bands boot off the stage at OzFest. I must not have been to that one. Crazy was... Town? No, I definitely Lincoln was... Park and Methods of Mayhem. I was not at that one. Definitely not, because I don't remember any of those And bands. I now remember one other band we have to add to this list. Motley Crue. Oh, yeah. Because John Karabi. Yeah. And if there's anybody I like less than Vince Neil, it's John Karabi. <laughs> See, I, I can't talk about that one either, because I, I I was a... Nobody listened to it. No, Nobody but, no, listened to but it. I was a... I, I, I was a very light Motley Crue listener, as everyone should be. You know, I, like I, I listened to like you know the 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 radio hits. That's basically it. You showed me a reg- another one. I'd be like, "What the fuck is this?" I'm not a, I'm not a Motley Crue fan. Yeah. But the fact that he got replaced by John Karabi, and then John Karabi left. Yeah, and they got Vince Neil back. They couldn't find anyone better than Vince Neil. <laughs> Anybody? He, he, oh, yeah. I've seen some videos of recently where, oh my God. Everyone's seen that video. Oof. I can do better than that. Wow. I actually, I think I'm in better shape than that. <laughs> and I'm fat. <laughs> but back to back to Black Sabbath. Black Sabbath had that, that huge, long career. Mm-hmm. And once they got back with, with, once it was Black Sabbath again, yeah, nothing happened for a while. Yeah. And then that album came out, 13. Oh, I know people don't like it. I mm-hmm. love it. I really do. And it was... For Black Sabbath to for that to be the last Black Sabbath album, it yeah. felt good. Yeah, yeah. Like I, I talk all the time about Ozzy's last album not right. Being, shouldn't it, yeah, it should have been the it album been beforehand. Screen. Yeah, it should have been two back. Screen. Oh, two back. Okay. Yeah, because um, he has that one song you showed me where he basically says goodbye. Yeah, it's a uh, uh, I love you all. It's the final track on screen. Right. God bless. I love you all. It's so so good. Yeah. And I I honestly feel that whole album, every bit of it, was him saying I want to stop. Yeah. And I know for a fact Sharon's dragging him through it. You can feel it. Yeah. Like, because the next album, he wrote nothing. Well, it's 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 also, have you watched that TV show? Unfortunately, yes. You I, know? I, well, not, not, I don't mean, I, I mean the paranormal one, where he sits with Sharon. I'm and, sorry. And Jack shows them videos of paranormal things, and then they give it a uh, oogie boogie scale or something. Ozzy's asleep at half of them. 
You know what you just told me? What? <laughs> They're propping up a dead man in the yes, corner. They and are showing him. They are. I love. Listen, Ozzie. sometimes he says some funny things on it, but he, half the time he's like, he's well, a, he's huh? You know, <laughs> seventy four. He's suffering from Parkinson's. Yeah, let the man, man retire. Yeah. Live off his royalties. Stop squeezing him. <laughs> and I, 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 I truly love Ozzy. He's if if you've ever read his his biography, mm-hmm. he's not. He's not afraid to say how bad of a person he's been. Right. He's um, he's very public about his addiction problems now. He, infidelity. He's you know he he's lived a bad like a not great life. Right. A ro- he was a rock star. I yeah. mean But at the same time, he's able to say, "Yeah, that, that wasn't cool. That wasn't cool." Yeah. And he's like, "I've been a bad parent. I've been a bad husband. I've been a bad influence. A bad role model." But I'm trying to be better. Mm-hmm. And now he really should be able to retire. Just chill Let out. the man rest. Yeah. Like, this is the same thing I say about the Stones. Let him rest. Who? Keith Richards? Because I really think, you don't think that... Uh, oh, the idea you, that he'll live forever? You don't think... Well, no, but you don't think Mick Jagger wants to do it? Well, he has 9,000 kids. So that's the way he gets away from them. I know. Tours. I know, but <laughs> still. I just, I just can't imagine being that... That far into life, and still doing and it. wanting and wanting to leave everything you know mm-hmm. and go out and see the world. Like I get the idea of seeing the world when you retire. Yeah, you, but you've been doing that since you were t- right. what, you've twenty-one. Seen everything. Yeah, it's Dana Gould. You say you know the, why did John Lennon uh, end up with Yoko Ono? He goes, well, you can only sleep with like four or five thousand women from each country, <laughs> and then it's really not about looks. <laughs> it's like. What are you doing? Like, yeah. what what are you accomplishing? And the Stones don't write new music. Mm-hmm. Uh, Sabbath. The reason that they're no longer touring is that they're not going to be writing new music. Yeah, but nobody wants to hear new music. I disagree. I want to hear new stuff all the time. I wanna... really see, but you're like the, you're like the exception. We went to we went to that show last week, right? And Goldfinger played a bunch of they they came out with a new album over the pa- pandemic, right? And they played a few from that and a few from like and he goes like this. He goes, I see you out there. He goes, you're music fans. And he goes, you hate when we play our new songs. We get it. He goes, I promise you, the last half of this of the set is all on the old stuff. He goes, you'll be jamming. And he did. The last half was all first, second, and third album. To Unreal. Me, to me, that 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 conversation shouldn't even have to happen. Cause For what? Like, you shouldn't have to say the last half is going to be all. It should be understood. Right. Like, I talk about my first experience seeing Symphony X live, where they we're, we're going to get to one of the bands. I got a I I have a story about seeing them. So Symphony X plays their the now they they play their album, and then they play the stuff you the other songs yeah. that people love. Right. Anytime Dream Theater comes through town and plays the new album, because a lot of their stuff's conceptual. Or if they do two nights in the same in the same city. How long is that show? Like four hours? Uh, three. Oh, it's, God, it's an, kill me. Uh, it's like, <laughs> and, and honestly, it is about four because they take a half hour I'm intermission. Joking. I'm not joking. <laughs> <laughs> so I'll give you an example. Um, when they play two nights in New York. Yeah. Um, one of the last times that I saw them. They play straight through two nights. Well, That's what you're saying. Well, they play two nights. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> sundown to sundown. Yeah. <laughs> but what happens is they play the first night. They play their show. And then it, it's an evening with, so there's no opening act. Okay. They do an entire set, take a half hour break, and do something else. Right. Um, they might do a whole album, or they might do um, all guests. Mm-hmm. Then the second night, they'll do the same the same first set, and then the second set, they'll do an album. Yeah. Somebody else's. What? From start to finish. Somebody else's album? So you go there and you don't even... Get the hell out of here. Ima- <laughs> no, but imagine in New York, you hear... A full set, right? And then they get off stage, take right. a break. They show videos, and mm-hmm. they get back on stage, and they play Master of Puppets from cover to cover. Yeah, but what if you're that one guy that doesn't know Master of Puppets, and now you're like, "What the fuck is this?" Well, do you think Dream Theater fans don't know? No, I. That's the idea. You're paying to uh, right. see an evening with band, right? Right. Like it's not like your normal show where you have three bands, four bands. Mm-hmm. It's completely different when when you go to see like a show like. In Chicago, I think they did moving pictures. Rush's moving pictures. They did the entire album. Yeah. Going, see, now I'm trying to think if I would even want to see a, another band do another band's full album. You do a cover, sure. But well, once you get to like the third song, I'm going to be like, oh. 
The reason that started was Dream Theater did these, they called them instrumentalies. Okay. Where they did instrumental medleys of songs that they liked. Right. And then they did covers. Like, you know who else does that? Weird Al Yankovic. Of Go course. Ahead. Yeah, no, absolutely. <laughs> but the idea being that these are accurate. Oh, Awesome background music. Yeah, here you go. Just some Welcome dude to, driving by. Welcome to Brooklyn. <laughs> so, what they do is they basically doing a two. Usually, it's a two guitar setup or something very specific that couldn't normally be done with one guitarist, mm-hmm. and the other guitarist is being covered by keyboards. Okay. So they're doing really complex music. You know, they actually. I think it was Number of the Beast they covered. The whole album. The whole album. That's cover to cover. All right. Including the guitar solos on keyboard, half on keyboard, half on guitar. Yeah. You know, they're really amazing when it comes to that. But they are not everyone's cup of tea. Mm-hmm. And now we're going to talk about another love-hate for me, Iron Maiden. Love-hate is in what? You'd... I love them, but they've been, like, I've had trouble with the like the last few albums. Oh, There's yeah. There's actually a couple of the replacement albums. The first album I'm not a huge fan of. You know, Paul but... Diano being the original singer. Yeah, yeah. I liked it, but I wasn't in love with it. Really? All right. It wasn't. It didn't have that Iron Maiden. It it, it isn't yeah. the Iron Maiden. It didn't that we have know the now. Iron Maiden. It, it didn't. didn't. Yeah, I understand. So Bruce Dickinson replaces Paul Diano after the first album. Yes. Um, I love the first album. I know you do, and it's. I, I know why. It's got this punk yes. attitude to it. Yes. And Paul Diano is very much a punk attitude guy, mm-hmm. and that's why I think they didn't want to keep doing it. And they found Dickinson, uh, I forget the name of the band he was in, but... I don't know. They they found him, he, they were enjoying him more than anything. Mm-hmm. And they recruited him and they got him. And he writes, his story, his songs aren't based on feelings or emotions, they're based on it's, history and, right, and yeah. poetry. Yeah. And that created a genre of music. Mm-hmm. You know, that did. I don't think that existed before Iron Maiden. What, that's... Power dirt? Metal. Is that what it's considered? Is yeah, that, yeah. You know, as much as as much as we, I know you don't enjoy power metal. Mm-hmm. You like Iron Maiden. Yeah. Oh well. Yeah. It's like enjoying. It's it, it's. Enjoying. It's one of those basics that you have to. It, it's it's almost like um, you know, when you go through school, there's those certain those the certain uh, uh, classes you have to take. Yes. Right. Iron Maiden's one of them. <laughs> it's PE. Right. Someone says they don't like Iron Maiden. You're like, what? On purpose? Yeah. How? No, I'm not. I like I said, I have a love hate relationship right. with them. Well, also, I, got the, I got the same thing with you. I don't like the newer stuff. I don't. You know, I listen to it once and I'm like, eh. I think I stopped at. Uh, did I tell you? I stopped at um, Fear of the Dark. Okay, so you you checked out? No, I wouldn't say early mid. Yeah. But what you didn't catch was the next change was uh, Blaze Bailey. Yeah. After Dickinson left and started his own band, mm-hmm. which, if anybody wants to look it up dickinson's band bruce dickinson is phenomenal yeah the um, i boss picasso is an okay album uh the chemical wedding mm-hmm. is amazing it's and the name of the band is just bruce dickinson yep okay it's a solo album like yeah. halford has halford and ozzy had their own solo out mm-hmm. solo bands dickinson had his and it's phenomenal i saw i saw um dickinson tour um I think it was Chemical Wedding. It was just before he rejoined mm-hmm. Iron Maiden. And it was really good. Yeah. It was a great time. The producer, Roy Z, was playing guitar. Um, uh, Adrian Smith was on, on other guitar before he rejoined Iron Maiden, mm-hmm. turning them into a three-guitar yeah. band. Which is, when you see them live, it's unbelievable. Huge respect for Iron Maiden for not Kicking replacing the out. guitars. Yeah. Um, they, had, they could have said, you know, we only really need two, mm-hmm. but they love the guy. And... Adding to a group can only really add. Yeah. And I love that. Yeah. You know, even though he falls off the stage and breaks his arm. <laughs> I'm not holding it against him. It's life. <laughs> listen. Listen. When we have, go through wall stories, uh, I fell off stage once. Uh, once. I, I, I haven't I fallen once. off stage, but I've fallen through stages. I did. I did. It's on. It's on. It's on. It's, it's on it, tape. It's on video. Do not we, only that, it's. Can we bring that in? Uh, have you ever seen the documentary? Docu- documentary? The UFK. Sudden fear and yes, I didn't. I haven't watched stuff. it all the way through. Really, you didn't I must watch have the UFK that. part? I fall right off the fucking stage in the Continental. Yeah, I'm gonna need a <laughs> copy of this. 
<laughs> hang on, we can. That's going to be my new on. background on it, my this phone. This will be. This will be. It, 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 you can isolate on YouTube the UFK part, and we can just watch. We'll watch that after this. Watch. We're not going to watch it. I'm going to record it, <laughs> and I'm going to play that. I'm going to make it a motion video <laughs> for my background on my phone. Okay. Well, uh, so just constantly falling. So we're going to go on to the. Oh wait, uh, we didn't talk about Blaze Bailey really. Yeah. Well, so yeah, there's no reason why. I disagree. <laughs> so he. Dickinson leaves. Yeah. Blaze Bailey comes in and does two albums. Yes. Uh, the X Factor and Virtual Eleven. Neither of which I They are the 10th and the 11th album. Okay. Um, X Factor's good. Virtual Eleven, not so much. Um, now, again, how are they Iron Maiden? They are straight up Iron Maiden albums because they were written by everybody else. Lyrically and everything? Yes. Okay. You can feel it, and actually so much so that now... Uh, a song that was on at least one song that was on those albums, mm. uh, "The Klansman," is sung regularly by Dickinson. Wow, just well, kidding. It's the fact that <laughs> the Klansman. Well, it's it's not that it's the Scottish Klansman. Oh, okay. No, it's not that white. Yeah, like, wow, that's the one they pick. All right, <laughs> they're but they're English. They don't know anything about the KKK. Did you hear what you just said? I did. The KKK. <laughs> yeah, we know what they are. They exist. They are referred to in the United States as the Klansmen. Yes. <laughs> but these English dudes yeah. don't know that. They think of Klansmen as Scotsmen. Yeah, with the kilts. The kilts and the big sword or a musket in some cases. Depending on where in history you're looking. Mm-hmm. But that's what they think of. And that's what that song's about. So, Blaze Bailey, two albums. I, th- I don't think he even had a live album. And he's out again. Right. And Dickinson's back. And it's been Dickinson this whole time. Yes. Blaze Bailey... Puts out solo albums under the name Blaze and then eventually Blaze Bailey. Um, they're not bad, like especially the first two, Silicon Messiah and the Tenth Dimension are really good uh, Blaze Bailey albums because they are not trying to be Iron what Maiden. he was an Iron Maiden. Right. He is not trying to be an Iron Maiden ripoff, mm-hmm. which is my argument with some other bands. Yes, he's trying just being himself. Right. You try then he's not trying to live off of the, the fame name. of. Yes, the last and he band. doesn't say, like, there's no mention. Right. Hey, I, pl- I sang with them for two albums. Yeah, there's None no of mention that. of, he doesn't cut, like, I don't know if he covers their songs live. I know he does the songs that he did. Yeah. But nothing, like, he's not messing around. Mm-hmm. Um, also, I've heard reports he's a douche, but I've never seen anything online about him acting up. Yeah. Uh, Paul not- Diano, not so much. Yeah. And uh, that pretty much covers Iron Maiden. Mm-hmm. 13, 14, 15 albums, 16 albums, somewhere there. And uh, less than Sabbath, but uh, not nearly as many singers. Yeah. and Still now, as iconic. Yeah, still as... Oh, those, those are two of the founding pillars yeah. of heavy metal. At least. Next one is a weird a weird Seattle band. Little known. Uh, Queensryche. <laughs> little known. <laughs> little known to me because I think I only bought the Empire. That was was the Empire. album even called Empire? That's Empire, the one. Yeah. That's the one I bought and everybody else did. Woo-hoo! I own every Queen's Rike album. Do you? I do. And then I listen to Operation Mind Crime after the fact. Every uh, well, I didn't get into them until well after that was out. Uh-huh. Um, not not because of age or anything. I just didn't get into metal until la- later. Mm-hmm. That album changed the way I listen to music. Which one? Operation Mind Crime or Empire? Okay, Mind Crime. Empire was a good album. Yeah. Uh. But they did have problems in the band. Like, there was a lot of fighting mm. all through their career. They were constantly, they were, gu- guitarists were in and out, basses were in and out. So, who were the Constants? The was Constants it? were the drummer. Jeff and, Tate. Uh, no, Jeff Tate. Uh, that's actually why we're talking about this. Jeff Tate left or was kicked no, no, out. No, 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 but I'm saying the, the original. Oh, the original band? Scott Rockenfeld. Uh, man, I can't remember the guitarist yeah. names. Whatever. Yeah. But <laughs> one guitarist was replaced in the 2000s, and then finally Jeff Tate. Well, they they split. They split. In the, wasn't it two Queens there, Rikes? There were two Queens Rikes, and that's because Jeff Tate refused to not use the name, sued and lost. Okay, so he so now he can't use the name. Right. He can he can call it Jeff Tate, uh, and you know can he do the songs though? Oh, he has absolutely any the rights to anything he wrote. Yeah, anything they've done together, he has the right to do. So you're gonna go see but you're you gonna go see a them. cover band of Queen's Reich with the singer. That's he's basically. not bad. He's not I don't. Well, he's, he's a singer. I would, you know. But you know the band the band he chose yeah. is really good. Yeah. And he's been he's done other projects, mm-hmm. um, Sweet Oblivion and a few others. He he set the record for them. They found the the drummer from a 
power metal band called Crimson Glory. Mm-hmm. This guy, Todd Latore. They found him. He sings for Queensryche from that point forward. Right. He's great. Yeah. He's a great singer. He's got a great attitude. Um, when their drummer couldn't do work, he ended up recording the drums for the next album. Mm-hmm. And now they're having issues with their drummer saying that he was kicked out, but he wasn't. He's selling off um, signed stuff by them yeah. without permission. It's a huge fight. You have to get permission to sell signed stuff. I don't know. I it's it's Queens, right? There's always uh, yeah. there's always been something in the air. Yeah. There's always been a fight between at least two members of Queens, right? Yeah. Which leads us to another band where there's always infighting, Journey. Yeah. And Journey started with Steve Perry. Yeah. Um then Steve Ogieri was his replacement. Steve right. Steve Perry. That's not the guy that was from YouTube. No, Steve Ogieri was literally a he, he was a sound alike, but he wasn't very good at it. As, okay, compared to what they found later. Yeah, he couldn't keep it going over time. Like he kept blowing out his voice on tour. Okay, okay. They didn't record any new material with him. They re-recorded stuff with him. Why would they? Oh, because he. Cause... And then they record once they did record stuff with him. They realized he couldn't. He, Why'd they have to re-record it, though? They did, They wanted to. They wanted to re-record to show that they had a new singer. Okay. This is something they've done more than once. Mm-hmm. J- Journey's known for this weird re-recording issue. Yeah. So they get Steve Ogieri. He can't finish or can't keep up with the, the work. They get rid of him. They find on YouTube, they find Arnel Pineda, a Philippine-born uh, singer from a band called The Zoo. Yeah. He... They found a video of him covering Journey songs and not easy ones. Yeah, and he was perfect. He's perfect. He sounded I, I, just like they they had to verify he wasn't lip syncing over a track. Right, right. They get him, they bring him to America, they get him set up. He is now the current permanent yeah. singer. I see they played not last year, but I think the year before they did New Year's Eve. Yeah. In Times Square, and it was on, you know, whatever. And he's, I mean, his it voice was is, amazing. I was like, wow, it's phenomenal. Yeah, his voice is is because I'm immaculate. I, I was never a big Journey fan, you know. Uh, again, radio stuff and no, there was a singer before Steve Perry. Was there? But who cares? Okay, good. <laughs> like <laughs> Steve Perry's who we know, right? Right. Uh, there, I can't remember the guy's name. Uh, he was, I think, two albums. Mm-hmm. It wasn't good. Yeah, it was a completely different sound. It wasn't like. I consider Journey to be pop progressive. Like, they yeah. were moving towards progressive music, but they were very poppy. Yeah. Man, those songs are good. They are. They. You know what? I, I enjoy a Journey song. But. Also, when Steve Perry left the band, he had his own solo album, mm-hmm. which is another 80s... It's 80s hits. Yeah. Oh, Sherry. Is it, I, I, oh, that's... That's Steve wow, Perry. Wow, okay. Yeah. All right. It was phenomenal. See, a lot of the 80s stuff I just listened to. I didn't know who did it. If I didn't, you know, if I didn't care, I wouldn't look into it. I only looked into it as an adult because I started thinking, oh, what, what about this song? And yeah. I, the ability to hum at your phone and it finds what you're trying to right, hum at right. is a huge deal for me because I can't remember the names I have to <laughs> sing it most of the time. <laughs> so now we're going to talk about the one we skipped over. Yes. Because this one, this one's actually pretty, pretty straightforward. There are very few changes in this band, but the one change. It was huge. And it, it led to the first discovery on this podcast. Yes. My first new piece of information. So Mike Patton replacing Chuck Mosley. Right. So he replaced him because Chuck Mosley was basically a disaster. He was all over the place. Yeah. And he couldn't he couldn't keep they, they, they couldn't they couldn't keep going if he stayed. Yeah. They were he, he was he was kneecapping himself. Right. So what they did was they, they I, I'm not even not even sure how they found Mike Patton. I don't know. Yeah. Okay. I'm not- well, he had been in, I know he had been working with Mr. Bungle before. Yes. And they, I think they found him through a, a Mr. Bungle, like a demo or something like that. Probably. And then, and then they, they brought him in and he just fit. And the, the, the thing that you, that you said that you learned from me is that that first album, the real thing. Was written for Chuck Was Mosley. written for Chuck Mosley. And it has his voice and his style in mind. Right. Which is incredible because I really feel that is my favorite Faith No More album. And I like Chuck. Mm -hmm. I I do like Mike Patton's voice better. Yes. He's, uh, for some people, Mike Patton's an acquired taste though. I know a lot of people who, they, they, 
they don't like Faith No More because of Mike Patton. I, it's funny because I the other bands that he's in, I like less than Faith No More, and not I wouldn't say because of Mike Patton. He's not the factor. Uh, it's the it's it's the listen, mu- it's a Mr. Mr. The Bungle is one of my other favorite. The, mm. That first album, mm. that first not the first album. No, I'm sorry, their second album, uh, the one with the clown on it. Ugh. That is really I just I, love it. All of, love it. All of the. If I was on a desert island, that uh, that album has to come with me. Is that coming? Yes. 100%. That's gonna be on the desert island. Hundred percent. Okay. That and every Faith No More album, including the Chuck Mosley album. I can, I can, I can agree. But the Chuck Mosley was great. The real thing was yes. my, It was is that's what got be. me into them. Yeah. That is my favorite album. My favorite album by them is Angel Dust. I know you've said and that's that. That's everybody. Almost any. I don't want to say real Faith No More uh, uh, fan. Angel Dust is Mike Patton. Now he could do his own thing. I, I get that. It's, Angel Dust, it's Angel Dust fi- has that ahead. feeling. King for a Day is their first. I love that one too. Of course. But it's the first step away from their guitarist, Jim Martin. Yes. Yes. Which made me nervous. It, it was it was nerve wracking. But I loved it. I loved it. And it, it, needless to say, Faith No More is one of my favorite bands. Yes. Uh, I saw them when they came back. For Soul Invictus. Right. Soul Invictus, which... By the way, had to grow on me. Oh, it still hasn't. I'm, I'm, I love it. I love I'm, it now. But it falls into the same, like to me, it falls into the same feeling as all the other projects he has. Yeah? Where they're, it's cute. Yeah. But it doesn't do anything Well, for me. the first song they released was uh, Motherfucker. Yeah. Right? And I remember listening to it. I forget who I was with. Hopefully not your children. No. I was with somebody. And I remember them looking at me after it was over because it was released as a single. And it ended and they looked at me and they went, God, I hope it gets better after that. And I, <laughs> went, I went, you know what? Yeah. But I listened to that one and that one grew on me. And then Superhero. And eh. so what they did when they came back was they, they did it reverse of what you said. They played all the hits in the front yep. and everybody's going nuts. And then they kill it with then, all the old shit. Then, no. And with then, all the new shit. And then all of a sudden, they played... Soul of Vicus, front to back, till that, the end. That sounds... And it came out that day, I believe. I was like, that sounds like the reason I didn't go to see that. I believe it came out that day. And I went, everybody was like, they're going to they're gonna, they're gonna play one of the old ones soon, right? And then I hated, I, I, I loved it, and I hated it. Well, with his, his distaste for Epic, because... Mm-hmm. That's what, yeah. Um, it's the same argument that... Um, Janie Lane had about Cherry Pie. Mm-hmm. He hated that song. Right. Hated, hated, hated. Well, now it makes sense why he hates Epic, right? What? It wasn't his song. It, yeah. But at the same time, he hates it because it's like... It's the famous. It's the... Yeah. Do the thing. Play it. Yeah. 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 Do, the, do the bit. Yeah. Play the song. And he, he despises it. The same way Radiohead doesn't play Creep. Um, I'm... Whatever Pearl... I forget what song Pearl Jam... Does, refuses to play live now. Yeah, probably Jeremy. Probably Jeremy. <laughs> but um, there are bands that just despise their hit. Yeah. I can get why he hates it. Yeah. Uh, definitely. But come on. It's a good song. Right. It's and, a, and you got to do what the what the people want to hear. My fa- One of my favorite live albums is Live at Brixton Academy, mm-hmm. which is Faith No More. Yeah. And he's singing this song is a song that starts with an E. Yeah. And they break into it. He doesn't right, even right, want right. to say the name. Yeah. The same thing when they cover uh, War Pigs. You he know, doesn't like that either? He doesn't like it. Live? Yeah. He manias parts of the the, the lyrics. Hmm. The Day of Judgment God is Calling part yeah. of War Pigs. He manias. Yeah. yeah. But that's him also. Yeah. So who knows? Uh, But yeah. But he was a great replacement. And he then was. they then like, you know, they disappeared for, geez, 20 years? 15, 20 years. Yeah. Right? Over. And then they came back with the, with a new album. I'm not a fan of that album, but they're doing fantastic. Right. I just wish they would come back to America and hopefully not do fucking Ticketmaster where I had to pay $600 to see them, which would happen. Yeah, I know. For them, it would happen, and it stinks. Speaking of bands that aren't coming back, the next one on the list, Genesis. Yes. Now, the reason Genesis isn't coming back is Phil Collins is now... Old. Well, he's old. And he's, he's also... sick. He's in pain. Yeah. He has back problems, years of drumming. Right. He doesn't play the drums anymore. Where have we heard he, that from? What? <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
Oh, but the Mike. only thing the only thing is is that uh, you know Phil Collins is like seventy five and responsible for the biggest payout <laughs> in British history as far as alimony. I mean that God, divorce we call settlement. out Mike so much. I'm, we love you, dude. We love you, Mike. <laughs> We're just bitter because we really want to play. <laughs> so he replaced Peter Gabriel in Genesis. Yes, which is shocking because Peter Gabriel himself is amazing. Peter Gabriel is phenomenal, but. Very avant garde. I was about to say he's very wacky. Now I remember when I saw that 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 sledgehammer video when I was a kid. I was like, I don't know what's going on, but I love it. I, I it's so weird and wild. Right. All, all his videos were strange and avant garde because he started back into popular music at the same time MTV started getting big. Mm-hmm. So he took a new medium, found an art director, right. that would work with him, and they created all new stuff. Like some of his songs are just straight up creepy. Yeah. Uh, I int- shock the monkey. I don't shock even know what monkey. that means. Intruder. I don't know. Intruders. If I heard that one. I may have heard. I don't I'm going to just. Heard. I'm going to tell you lyrics. Okay. I know something about cutting phone lines and sneaking in quietly. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. It is <laughs> like that. It is a creepy song. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but Peter Gabriel was that level. Mm-hmm. Lamb lies down on Broadway. That level of, of right. avant garde. When Phil Collins took over as as frontman, Genesis took a very different turn. Still progressive and still still technical and complicated, but went more popular, went very more, more pop. Yeah, um, I we use pop as as a descriptor. It's popular music is popular music, right? But pop is a style. Yeah, it's an upbeat man. Those the the I can't dance and all that stuff. The radio hey. stuff. Land of even Confusion, Susudio. Susudio. Have you ever heard of the Phil Collins Big Band? <laughs> no, I thought you were gonna do. No, <laughs> I'm sorry. I thought you were gonna go right into American Psycho just now because you really set it up like that. This is Susudio. <laughs> no, um, the Phil Collins Big Band. He actually did a big band album, okay, of songs, Genesis and Phil Collins songs, it, with a big band. Shut up! I'm finding that after I'll, this. I'll give you a copy. I have it. <laughs> oh, I'll gladly give you a copy. It is so good. Yeah, it's so much fun, and it's it's one of those albums that just it's fun. Yeah. It's just, it's Genesis and Phil Collins, mm-hmm. and he's leading, singing, and and doing drum work in some of it. That's awesome. Because you know, wh- I never realized. Have you ever seen the live shows of of either Genesis or Phil Collins when he does in the air tonight? Yes, where he starts yes. with the. With well, the- that's that's where I found out that Phil Collins was a drummer. I was like, wait, what? You know, because back in the day, we just heard it on the radio. Yeah. I had no idea, and then you see the videos, and or, or somebody came up to me and was like, you know, Phil Collins was the drummer, right? And I'm like, what? He like, huh? I was like, yeah, he know that talk. Yeah, he did that. I'm like, what? He's responsible for the Wait, greatest drum right, fill of right. all time. <laughs> and that that sound is responsible for my favorite meme video of the deer trying, <laughs> trying to get, to get up, up the slide. <laughs> I know it. I watched that 47 times in a row <laughs> with my wife on my porch, and she wanted to kill me. How? Yes. So, Genesis, I love. Yes. Even though they're weird, even though they're poppy, even though they're weird and poppy. The next one on the list. This is a pretty. This is a love. <laughs> this is this is the dividing line. Yeah, because this is the Van Halen, Van Hagar. Yeah, I'm Van Halen. I am Van Hagar. Are you? I love. Don't get me wrong. I like Sammy. I like some of the songs, but no. But here's I the disagree. but here's the thing. You know what destroyed it for me? The isolated vocals of David Lee Roth. Have you heard those? Yes, I have. Terrible. They, what are the because those noises make sense? They don't make sense in the song, but they sound okay in the song. Yeah, but by themselves, we, they are just what he's noises. specifically mentioning <laughs> is "Running with the Devil." Right, those the isolated vocals from "Running with the Devil" mm-hmm. with a uh, a whirlwind whistle. That's what that sound is. That woo. No, not that. Just the sounds he makes. Oh, just, ah, 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 yeah. We're, we're, okay, so David Lee Roth is one of the few people that can actually split their voice. So when he does the upper register stuff, There's instead a, yeah. of over tracking, he'll just split the voice. Uh-huh. So he'll have his, and then he'll have a whistle pitch above it. Yeah. So it creates a very cool effect, but it sounds stupid by itself. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it worked really well, but Sammy was the better writer. Okay. You know, Van Halen is the party band. Mm-hmm. You know, they always. You know, I don't know if you've seen them. Li- well, back when they used to do live shows, I never saw Van Halen live. So they used to introduce the fourth and fifth member of Van Halen what was it, together. Like Jack and Coke or something. No, it was um, it was Michael Anthony and a Jack Daniels bass. Yeah, it was literally a bass in the shape of a Jack Daniels bottle. Yeah, and he would play a four and a half minute bass solo. Mm. 
uh, loops and yeah. amazing stuff. But usually that was part of the time where the singer got a break and was under the stage fooling around with fans. Right. Same thing when when the drum solo was happening, everybody else was on the stage fooling around. Yeah, yeah. That was the thing of that time. Right. These guys were party guys. They were the king of party guys. Mm. David Lee Roth, as fun as he is, not Wasn't fun to me. Wasn't that guy? He's not fun to me. He is very much the fun guy. Yeah. Not to me. What do you mean? That's the guy you watch at a party going, I'm going to hit that guy. Oh, yeah. Oh, he would drive me nuts. Yeah. He's he's a yeah. <laughs> in yeah. your face. Yeah. I hate that. Yeah. Sam, uh, Sammy Hagar, he's got, hey, come have a drink. Right, right. Let's he's talk, the chill Let's dude. talk about yeah. cars and music. All right. All right. I'm not talking about, listen, I'm not talking about personally. <laughs> but, <laughs> no, but even his, his writing style, you can feel that. Yeah. Yeah. You know, everyone talks about Dreams being a departure from the rest of their songs because of the keyboards. Mm. Uh, Jump is another one that everyone, that's really what started pushing David Lee Roth away from the band. Really? Because I didn't Jump know that. is all keys and he didn't, he wanted to be rock and roll. A rock and roll band, yeah. And that disagreement is what led to I the did fracture not of the know band. that. And that's why that's S- what Sammy is so into it all makes everything. sense now. It does, doesn't it? Do you know what I'm talking about? No. I'll tell you after this. Oh no. <laughs> oh no. I think this might be the last episode, folks. <laughs> so multiple albums with Dave uh, with uh, Sammy Hagar. Yeah. You know, we we got Everything under the books. Mm-hmm. Great tours, live album, and then they part ways. Yeah. And they get Gary Sharon from Extreme right. as their new singer. Who was awesome in Extreme. Awesome in Extreme. I liked him. I got a standing ovation doing an a Extreme uh, karaoke with my friend. Was it more than words? It was. I knew it was. And we both, I, I did the low part and he did the, no. I did the, I don't, whatever it was, I was drunk at the time. <laughs> yeah, standing ovation, people like, please Boy, get off the yeah. stage. All right, we get it. <laughs> so Gary Sharon replaces Sammy Hagar, and I kind of liked it. I never listened to it. Oh, man. I may have, you know what? I probably heard like 30 seconds of a song and went, nope. You probably heard 30 seconds of either Without Your Fire in the Hole. Oh, yeah, yeah. Fire in the Hole was from the Lethal Weapon 4 soundtrack, Oof. so not great. <sighs> yeah. Um, Without You was their, the video. It was okay. the one video they put out. It was a little much. Yeah. For for an introduction. Was he trying too hard or it just didn't fit? It just, it just, that song falls flat. Yeah. But there is a song on there, a ballad. Yeah. That is Gary Sharon. Mm-hmm. It's, it's one of those, if you want to, if you want to feel a way about something, mm-hmm. this song, it's called A Year to the Day. Yeah. It is, it's a knife in the heart. Uh, and I, it's, I know how you feel. <laughs> It's, it's, I don't want to feel sad on purpose. No, no, but it doesn't make you feel sad. It just makes you feel something. No, oh, And his voice is super powerful. Yeah. And the guitar work is crazy because Eddie was a genius. Mm-hmm. He was a, a master mm-hmm. of a guitar. His son is phenomenal. You know, and people want to talk shit about Wolfgang. Right. But he's a great writer. You yeah. Know, he wrote, is he? Have you heard the uh, uh, Mammoth EVH stuff? No. His son has a, has a band. That's his band? Yeah. It's really good. Mm. It's really fun. He's he's I'll play Wolfgang is a bass player though, right? He's a bass player and a guitar player. Oh, okay. Like his dad. Yeah. Pl- played everything. So honestly, give Gary Sharon a chance. I'll yeah. I'll play a track for you after this. Mm. Uh next one, Anthrax. And this is where I was asked to leave last time. <laughs> so we're gonna start out. There is an original singer, Dan Loker. Yes. Uh I don't like him at all. Well, he has a in the New York scene. He's yeah. got a he's yeah. got a he's got a, a reputation. Right. We'll just say that. Yeah. Yes. Um, then he was replaced by Joey Belladonna. Mm-hmm. Joey Belladonna being the face of the band. I don't. Is he older than the rest of them? Because he looks older. He looks older. Yeah. He looks like three hundred. <laughs> <laughs> he's still ripping it though. Oh, absolutely. But in the nineties, he leaves. Right. And, and they, they get John Bush, and yeah. this is where. We disagree. I love John Bush. I'm not going to... Here's the thing. Is I'm not going to say I'm a fan of Bush for the obvious reasons. Yeah. But John Bush is amazing. I loved Armored Saint, and I love, love, love Anthrax with John Bush. Yeah. I, I Listen, I don't hate it. It's not like, uh, you know, I, I, I loathe them for that. Because I have the albums. Uh, I've listened to them. 
Mm-hmm. I've enjoyed them. When he comes back, when, you know, Joey Belladonna comes back, I'm done with John Bush. See, I still I I'm still done. listen to those <laughs> no, I still listen to those albums fondly. Yeah, all right. Including um The I, Greater of Two Evils. I wouldn't yell at you if you put them on, but no, yeah. I'd be like, eh, all right, this is the anthrax for the album you pick. <laughs> Even better, The Greater of Two Evils, their their recorded album, like their in studio recorded album of them covering the Joey Belladonna songs with John Bush. Uh huh. I really like. Not all of them, uh-huh. but there are some songs that I really like he, the way he sings. Okay. The one of the things that I love about um, John Bush is the California style, that California style to his voice, where it's a little more yeah. Like the, there's obviously a, a not an inflection, but the way he sings, right? And his screams, his screams live are ridiculous. Mm-hmm. And then John Bush eventually leaves. After the, I think they, they did a tour where they tried to do both singers. Really? I didn't know that. And it failed. Yeah. Like it just couldn't get off the ground. Everybody I why. parts ways. Maybe it's, yeah, I don't it might have been yeah. the same reason Ozzy and Dio yeah. didn't work. Um, they end up getting uh, Dan Nelson. And I believe Dan Nelson is a Long Island guy. I think so, yeah. Um, and he was good. Like you can only find rare stuff online live mm-hmm. of him. They 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 actually recorded worship music with with Dan Nelson. Yeah, and then I've when never they heard got, any when they got Joey back. Yeah, they re-recorded it with Joey. Yeah, and uh, this actually this is something John, uh, our guitarist, he's not our guitarist, but our guitarist <laughs> friend, talk about all the time. Uh, he is mad at Anthrax for getting rid of Dan Nelson because really? they didn't do it in a professional way. Oh, it was one of those he was right. fired without knowing he was fired. Really? Which is the next band is also guilty of the same thing. Mm-hmm. But uh in this in this case, Dan Nelson was replaced again by Joey Joey Belladonna. Right. So, How'd they do? What did they just he I, just didn't call him for practice anymore? I, I think mean, they said like they just stopped calling him and then just they announced on like Hey, Joey's back. Probably on Eddie Trunk or something that yeah. Joey's back in the band. Yeah. Because all these New York guys all know each other. Right. Now we're gonna talk about the band. Yes. The biggest controversies, I think, amongst these bands is Judas Priest. Because Judas Priest, Rob Halford, held it down for all these albums. Mm-hmm. They switched styles for 1991's Painkiller. Loved it. Uh, favorite fucking album. It's not my favorite album. God it is, it is amazing. Painkiller's Pain unreal. My man. favorite song on that album is Between the Hammer and the Anvil. I like that too. I like the whole album, but but my favorite album is Turbo. Painkiller makes me want to throw up. Go ahead, Turbo or Good Ram way. It Down or Good at way. the top. Go ahead. <laughs> so, ninety one, this comes out. There's still leather. There's still motorcycles. Tough. Um, not long after Halford leaves. Yes. And not long after that, he comes out mm-hmm. for the first time. Uh, not even it's it's. It's the first time a heavy metal singer has come out right. as openly gay. And how did we not see it coming? Not even that. Like, be, be, <laughs> barring the living after midnight and Hell bent for leather. <laughs> hot rocking. Yeah. The video for Hot Rockin' should have let you know everything that was going. But it didn't matter. But and no, that's the you one know thing what I, I love about it? Right. I, I was about to say the same thing as you. Everybody went, everybody went, all right. Yeah. Cool. Well, not, there, there are a group of people like, oh, of, fuck that. Of course there are. But when I heard... Okay, he's gay. Yeah. The, the, When's the, the next way, Judas Priest album coming the out? Way he, the way he announced it, mm. you know, it was an interview with Metal Edge magazine. Right. If you could if you could sleep with one celebrity, who would it be? And he said, Howie Long. <laughs> <laughs> now, that's that's yeah. hilarious, because right. he had never said anything like that before. Right. And the guy's like, I'm sorry, what? He goes, yeah, yeah no, I've been gay all my life. Right. And he's very, he just decided that was going to be the, the, the place to stand up and say mm-hmm. it. And... You know, he was already at a priest. He was working with Fight. Yes. And by the way, if fight, you can get I your hands on fight. fight, Fight I Love. And then he did two uh, with um, uh, Trent Reznor. He did I think I an industrial that. album with Trent Reznor. Okay. Uh, I can give you a copy. Yeah. It's awesome. And then Halford. Yes, that and I And now, yeah. while he was doing uh, Halford, Judas Priest picked up again and got Tim Owens. Mm-hmm. Another replacement from a cover band, right? Who sounds almost? I mean, I mean, it's like a, it's like a. They got him because he was a, a sound alike. Yeah. Um, 
Not so much though, because live they had to drop down a whole step in tuning, and I everything's was, played a little deeper. Is it true that 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 uh, rock star? Yeah, Matt Damon movie. Or, <laughs> Matt, Mark Wahlberg. Mark Wahlberg, Matt Damon. They're all the same guy. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> Some rando. Yeah. It is very Some Boston. Dickhead. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Some call me at the docks douche. <laughs> I don't want to make fun of Boston people, but come on. You live you live in a harbor. Shut up. I love Boston, by the way. It's a beautiful The band, place. I mean. What? <laughs> oh, poor Brad Delph. Oh, that poor... <laughs> Who knew you couldn't barbecue in your nope. bathroom? He, he knew you couldn't barbecue in the bedroom. <laughs> That's why it ended. Anyway, no, I mean, Boston, the city is awesome. It is, it is a beautiful place filled with the horrible people. <laughs> Go ahead. I'm sorry. Monsters all the way through. Um, so they got... Um, they got Tim Owens and they did one album. Then they did a live album, which is my favorite heavy metal live album. Okay. Uh, nine, uh, 98 live meltdown, which is mostly Judas Priest songs. It's a double disc. Mm -hmm. Um, and the new songs are in the middle, like they're mixed in with everything, but they start and start and end on great songs. Hellion, Electric Eye, Sentinel. And it's all him. It's, it's all. all Owens. Yeah. They do another album, Demolition. It is a wet fart. Really? It is terrible. But it's not... I can't blame him. Right. I can't blame the band. It I blame everybody. Work. It just didn't work. No, it's terrible. Yeah. It's not that it didn't work. Oh, it's It a is terrible a album. bad album. Like, Hardly written. There is not one track on there that I enjoy. Wow. It is the only Judas Priest album I'm like, I'll skip every track on it. Yeah. Like, if I'm going through the discography, skip, 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 yeah. skip, 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 skip. Next album. Yeah. Um... I saw Halford play at Lemoore's, mm -hmm. and it was his solo band right. for his second album. Okay. So the first album that he put out was Resurrection, which blew everything that Judas Priest had done mm -hmm. out of the water. Mm -hmm. Like, it was way better. Recording quality, style, writing, it was all better. The second album, also phenomenal. So they go on tour with this. Yeah. Um, and the first album, they had Pat Latchman from Damage Plan. Mm -hmm. The singer from Damage Plan. Okay. Playing guitar. He actually quit um, Halford yeah. to join Damage Plan. Okay. Um, this guy, Metal Mike Chalasiak, some big giant guy named Mike playing other guitar. Ray Renato on bass. And I for, uh, forget who was playing the drums. Great band. Um, Latchman leaves. They get Roy Z, the same guitarist who was playing on Bruce Dickinson's mm -hmm. stuff. The producer. Does a great job. The night we saw them, in the back of the of the club, I thought I saw Ian Hill. Okay. Three weeks later, they announced then that he's back. back in Judas Priest. Yes. <laughs> it was Ian Hill. Really, at yeah. Lemoore's, he was he was in New York for something and yeah. decided to come see him. Yeah. And and said, so "What the hell are the we doing?" The next <laughs> album, the next album Judas Priest, mm. Priest put out was phenomenal. Mm -hmm. It was amazing, cover to cover. It's one of those you know first yeah. track, last track, amazing, no right. skips. And then they put out, um, Halford kept putting out other Halford albums, mm -hmm. and they progressively got stinkier. Well, because he was focusing on he put priest, out a, I would He think. put out a Christmas album. Wow. It's awful. I love Rob Halford. <laughs> it is terrible. Have you, have you ever heard God Rest, God Rest Ye Merry Gentlemen? By Rob Halford? Yeah. No. I think he sings O Come All Ye Faithful, too, which is <laughs> inappropriate. <laughs> <laughs> Highly inappropriate. So, <laughs> Halford's back in. They were recently inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Yes. Now, their guitarist had left in the mid-2000s, replaced. The other guitarist is suffering from Parkinson's. He is, I wouldn't say replaced, but an their producer, Andy Sneap. Didn't one of is, them have a heart attack on stage? He, he had an an uh, aortic aneurysm. Oof. His heart basically started bleeding into his chest. Oh. Right on stage. Richie Faulkner, the youngest member of the band, mm -hmm. almost died on stage. Yes. I remember seeing a video of that. It was terrifying. He ended up, he was at the at the performance. He's been back on stage ever since. Oh, yeah? He's back okay. in full wow. force. All right, cool. He When I say the youngest member, he's like 50. Yeah. He's still, their, their drummer, uh, uh, Scott Travis. Mm -hmm. I mean, these guys are, the, even the younger guys are still older. Right. But they're phenomenal. Yeah. And Halford, 
for the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, he belted. Mm-hmm. Like, he showed off. Mm-hmm. The, 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 the falsettos he normally avoids live. Yeah. Did him. He went and did him well. Yeah. Like, it didn't feel flat. It didn't feel tired. Well, because he knew he could do it once and that was it. He didn't and have he didn't to do, have the whole to do show. it every night. Yeah. They, they did two songs. Yeah. Or three. Three. It was uh, Breaking the Law, Living After Midnight, and I think, I think it might have been Hellbent for Leather. Mm-hmm. But it was three songs. It was phenomenal. Yeah. And then they did their acceptances. The one thing I found weird is that they didn't thank each other. Really? Hmm. Yeah, whatever. That feels strange. Yeah. Especially the guy who hadn't been in the band for over a decade, they invited back to play live on stage. The guy who they had to sue because he was going to try to call the band Priest. Yeah. He actually ended up calling KK's Priest, which yes, is I remember terrible. That. Yeah. yeah. Now, I like I said, I love Tim Owens and I love Judas Priest. Mm-hmm. Yeah. KK's Priest is the kick in the face. Yeah. Because it's Tim Owens singing in KK's Priest. Oh, yeah? And it's awful. It's awful. It's yeah. not that it's awful. It's, 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 it's some of his best singing. Mm-hmm. I don't like the songs. Right. Um, you can tell who was writing. Yeah. If you've ever heard Glenn Tipton's solo album, Baptism of Fire, mm-hmm. you would know that he is the guy. He's not the guy. Uh, KK is not the guy writing. Yeah. Um, Halford's a great, great writer. Don't let him write alone. Because he ends up writing albums like Made of Metal. I'm not kidding. I wish I was kidding. It's awful. Made of metal. It's That's, awful. That sounds like a Manowar album. Oh, it might be. Who I love Manowar, I know by you. the way. And we, we were listening to oh that on the way here. So, and on that note, we should stop it. We're over our time that we normally go. <laughs> All right. But Manowar is coming. Yes. Christmas is coming. Yes. We love you. I love you. I love you, dude. Guys, take care of each other, take care of yourselves, and we'll see you real soon. Bye-bye.